Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and today we're taking a closer look at the possible link between eggs and diabetes risk. The Nutrition Diva podcast received support this week from Squarespace. The future is coming. Make it brighter with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a unique website. Showcase your work, blog, or publish content and sell products and services in just a few clicks. You can customize everything from the look and the feel to the settings and products with beautiful templates made by world-class designers. And there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Head to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code DIVA and you'll save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Amanda recently asked me to comment on a study showing that eating five or more eggs a week could triple your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And this study was highlighted in an online video that was posted by a medical doctor who's also a well-known proponent of the vegan diet. Although this particular commentator always cites published research to support his points, he can be very selective about the studies that he highlights. He tends to cherry-pick those that support his point of view and ignore those that don't. And to be fair, this is something that we are all somewhat liable to do and need to guard against. Upon closer inspection, this study did not actually find that people who ate a lot of eggs were more likely to develop diabetes. Rather, it showed that people who had been diagnosed with diabetes reported eating more eggs than those who hadn't. It's a subtle difference, but an important one. Interestingly, this study didn't collect any information about other aspects of their diet, just eggs. They didn't ask, for example, how much bread, pasta, potatoes, soda, meat, fried foods, sweets, or for that matter, vegetables they consumed. So you have to wonder whether there might have been some other aspects of their diets that could have played a role here. But this is not the only study to look at the link between egg consumption and diabetes risk. So what do the others say? Well, there are some other studies which have also found a positive correlation between egg consumption and diabetes risk. But in these other studies, those who ate the most eggs had a 20 to at most 50% increase in their relative risk. So the 300% increase that's highlighted in the doctor's video appears to be an outlier, to say the least. But that's not even the end of the story. I also found at least one study showing that people who ate the most eggs had a lower risk of type 2 diabetes. And there were plenty of other studies finding no association between egg consumption and diabetes risk. I have some thoughts on how to make sense of all this conflicting information, but first let me just take a moment to thank our sponsor. Getting ready to tackle your spring cleaning? This year, use the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to take on impossible stains better than sprays or wipes. The Magic Eraser is my new secret weapon in the bathroom. Not only does it make quick work of tub and tile, but it's really great at erasing those grimy fingerprints that seem to build up on the cabinets and the doors and around the light switches. Magic Eraser is actually the perfect name for this product. There are no buckets or stinky cleaning chemicals. You just wet this little sponge under the tap, give it a squeeze, and it's ready to erase. It cleans with water alone. If you're about to tackle your spring cleaning, you should definitely try Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. It makes cleaning your toughest kitchen and bathroom messes fast and easy. Check out mrclean.com slash podcast to see even more ways that the Magic Eraser can help you knock out impossible messes all around the house. And now back to our topic for today. If you already know that you either do or don't want to eat eggs and you're simply looking for a research study to support your point of view, well, then you can choose the study that confirms your conclusion. But if you're trying to decide whether or not eggs are a good choice for you based on the research, you're likely to feel a little frustrated. With so much conflicting data, what are we supposed to conclude? Well, that's where meta-analyses come in particularly handy. By pooling the results of lots of different studies on the same question, we can improve the statistical power of those smaller studies and compensate for various design flaws. 
And most importantly, we can clarify inconsistent results, which is what we're seeing here. And in 2016, researchers pooled data from 12 different studies, which together involved almost a quarter of a million people. And they found virtually no relationship between egg consumption and diabetes risk. A second meta-analysis published just last year in 2017, which involved half a million subjects, also found no relationship. So what do we do with this research? There are a lot of reasons that you might not want to consume eggs or animal products, and I'm not here to talk you out of them. But let's say you do enjoy eggs, yet you're also worried about developing type 2 diabetes. The real question for you is whether avoiding eggs now will lower your risk in the future. And unfortunately, that's a question that hasn't been researched. However, if reducing your risk of type 2 diabetes is your primary goal, here are three other steps that you can take that, in my opinion, will make a much bigger difference. Number one, if you're overweight, lose weight. Reducing your body weight by as little as 5% can significantly reduce your risk of diabetes, even if you're still overweight. Number two, if you're sedentary, get moving. Exercise can help improve your blood sugar metabolism and can also help you lose weight. And number three, reduce your consumption of added sugars and other refined carbohydrates, as these foods can contribute to high blood sugar and insulin resistance and diabetes risk. Ironically, eggs, which are low in carbohydrates and high in protein, can be useful on all three counts, because protein can help regulate your appetite, maintain lean muscle, and help keep your blood sugar levels steady. Thanks to Amanda for bringing this research up for discussion. And you'll find a transcript of today's show, which includes links to all of the studies that I referenced, as well as several previous Nutrition Diva podcasts with nutrition tips for those with diabetes and pre-diabetes. And if you have a question or a study that you'd like me to weigh in on, you can post it on our website or on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. Even better, join me for one of my live nutrition Q&A sessions. They're broadcast on Friday afternoons on Facebook, and I'd love to see you there. Have a great week, and remember to eat something good for me. 